when I hear the word heritage, I think not of me, I think of them, family, uh, the tribe, the nation, the, 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 the tradition in my blood. Uh, heritage is larger than the individual. It is, uh, it's responsible for my birth. It's, it, it's the character and the, the, the heritage I come from, the inheritance I bring. Um, in that sense, it's, tr it's, 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 it's overwhelmingly public and large. Um, when I think of identity, I think of the I, particularly in the American context, the first person, singular pronoun. The great gift of America is this presumption that I am Richard Rodriguez. The great presumption of, of, of heritage is that I am related to Mexico, related to the Spanish-speaking world, uh, related to a, a tribal family called Rodriguez, uh, that I have some identity apart from myself that, imp that, imp that, 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 that places itself upon me. How I negotiate between heritage and identity is really the subject of a lot of the work I've done as a writer. Because um, it's not always an even negotiation. The American eye sometimes surges. Other times it's pulled back by family, by the obligation to be someone else. Um, and in many ways, it can become a tragic uh, interplay. You know, it's, it's the, the, the perennial dilemma of youth, the wanting to be new and required to be old, you know. Well, for me, my love affair with the American tongue is that it is a wild language. It's, it's not British English that I speak. Uh, it's innovative, it's uh, playful, it's irreverent, it's, uh, it is not a language either that's very much defined by accent. It has a kind of uh, populist quality to it. I love American English because it's, I think of someone like Saul Bellow, the, the novelist, Augie March, the, the rat-tat-tat of American English, the, the, the young strut of it, you know. Um, and in that sense, it's per the perfect vehicle for my identity in that it allows me to, to play at my creation of Richard Rodriguez. It is not like Spanish, which is governed in my mind by a certain formality and, and the distinction between tu and usted. And in that sense, it's the old, it's the old world calling upon me and inter again, interacting with the, the new tongue. Well, I think, I think what really is happening in America is that Americans are realizing that all along we have been multiracial. It's not, we, there are some of us who, uh, as a mestizo, for example, I'm clearly, I, I, I clearly announce to America that I am part Indian and part Spaniard. And I have been this for centuries, maybe since the 17th or 18th century. And suddenly, you know, America has this idea Oh, this, this new idea of mixture. But, you know, a lot of Americans are lining up and spending three, four, five hundred dollars to have their DNA uh, tested. And they're finding out, you know, that I'm related to Syrians or I'm related to, to uh, Frenchmen, you know. And I never knew that, you know. I thought I was black or I thought I was white. And suddenly the whole question of identity becomes a question of repression. Why didn't I know this about myself? Why didn't, wh why was I told that I was white, that I had this single line of identity, when in fact I had, obviously, we come from, from this multitude of, of, of cultures, and some of us more than others, some places in the world like, you know, that are near water, where sailors have been, there usually are more than one identities in, in, in the single soul. Uh, but it comes now as at a time, I'm beginning to hear uh, the, the Census Bureau in Washington predicted Americans, after the census of 2020, it may be the last census that requires that we identify ourselves racially because we are becoming so complicated to ourselves. We have no way of naming ourselves. There are no names for these things. I mean, what do you, what do you call a, a child who is part Cambodian, part Mexican, and part German? What is that name? Uh, that child, you know, Tiger Woods has invented a, a name for himself. He's, he's black. He's Thai, he's American Indian, and he's white. He calls himself Cablanation. That's his word. And in a world in which, you know, now he's given birth to children who, who are part Swedish, it's Cablanation Swedish, you know. Uh, after a while, the word is just going to explode. Um, and we are going to realize that we live in an impure, a very mixed world. Well, you know, America is, is, has an has a older tradition of the outsider uh, within the country. Uh, it's a 19th century idea. 
uh, the outsider had not merely accepted in the country, but gradually the realization that we are all immigrants, America would say, except for the American Indian. Well, that's a very large advantage that the immigrant has, that, that, that the identity of the American is contained within the outsider. Uh, the, the immigrant to Europe uh, is coming to societies that are very developed, uh, very, co very, very coherent. And uh, it, it's, it, I think it, it's some obligation on Spain's part to educate itself to its own tradition of, of immigration, which has gone on for centuries. I mean, the Spanish character is not one thing. There are many, many uh, uh, ethnic groups and races that have, that have found their way to Spain. And I think if, if, if immigrants were taught, not that they are the exception, but they are a continuing uh, process of the Spanish formation, I think that could be very helpful. I, I, I hear a lot of immigrants in Europe now. I was in France and talking to some uh, French immigrants, and they were saying there was no, they have to become French, but France was not negotiating with them in any way. They weren't allowed to change France and so forth. I think in some way the children of, of of this new Europe should be encouraged to think that they are creating something as well as uh, simply uh, adapting to it.